Heads up everyone, um, I wanted to continue my conversation about Osar's cornfield. I previously talked about um, the cornfield and the uh, meditation that I was doing. It's an Osar meditation. The meditation is designed to help you to um, immerse yourself in the energy of Osar. By imagining yourself as Osar planting a seed of corn or a seed of grain of your choice. And you nurture the, in your meditation, you nurture the seed and you watch it grow. And um, it becomes a corn stalk bearing many corn cobs. And the concept is that from one seed comes many. And I've been developing insights dealing with this particular theme so i have a couple of videos on youtube about this this particular particular theme and um so i wanted to continue the discussion and today um what i really wanted to talk about was um transformation and the waters of newt uh in ut I'm self-taught, so I may not be pronouncing the words correctly, so please forgive me and uh, I beg your indulgence. Um, the waters of Newt are, um, that's a metaphor, and the metaphor is really designed to describe the subjective realm of Amen. Okay, that's a lot. It's a lot of, uh, it's a very abstract concept, but it's best explained today in modern terms dealing with quantum physics. And in quantum physics, what they're doing is they're, they're looking at the most fundamental realm of existence. And of course, they finally this, uh, themselves figured out that there is a subjective realm. Of course, our ancestors in ancient Kemet based their civilization upon the objective realm. Um, the objective realm, from our ancestors' point of view, was given the name of Amen. And um, on the tree of life, Amen ranks on the sphere of zero, meaning it's not on the tree of life. Amen is described as a deity, but it, it is a deity only in the terms of the uh, existence of an energy um, that never changes um, the, the the laws of uh, th of this level of energy never changes and so um, I'm getting my information from the Metunetter which was written by Ram Nefer Amin which he was able to harness from the uh, coffin text of ancient Egypt and the the pyramid wall so he did a lot of research to bring this information to us. And the law of Amen um, basically states that uh, I'm going to, to read the law and then I'm going to state it to you the way I like to say it because it makes it more personal for me. But the law from um, Ram for Amen's Ma'at, the 11 laws of God, the law of Amen states, you were made in the likeness of a peace that nothing can disturb. Reclaim your peace that you may attain to your reason for coming into existence, the enjoyment of life. And so what I like to do is to put, is replace the word you, you and your, those words, with I. I am made in the likeness of a peace that nothing can disturb. I reclaim my peace that I may attain to the reason I have come into existence, the enjoyment of life. Um, that that law is, um, you know, these laws, when you go through the 11 laws, you, you find something new every time you go through them. But... Um, it was difficult for me to understand. And so even as I, I say I understand some of it, I know that I'm growing in my understanding. So um, what I understand now will be built upon as I grow. 
what I want to share about this this um, piece is something that um, we've been taught that peace is a feeling okay the, the metu letter teaches that our feelings really are uh, can be can be misleading and so they're not the best judgment of what is true now in Western society when nothing disturbs us then we say we are at peace and really that connotation is um, claiming that outside forces are the things that disturb us and that um, outside forces cause us to become um, disharmonious and that if we can control our outside forces, then of course we should be able to have peace. But the law of our men is the opposite. Um, the law of our men is that the peace is inside of us and that nothing on the outside should be able to disturb that peace. Now that's a powerful statement because when you look at Osar and you look at the law of Osar, then um, that really, it really hits hard. Okay, here's the law of Osar. Your nature is an unconquerable peace. Therefore, nothing and no one in the world can be against you. All experiences come to you to promote your reclamation of peace that you may in turn acquire wisdom and power. Okay. I'll state it my way because I like to, to state it my way. Um, I, my nature, my nature is an unconquerable peace. Therefore, nothing or no one in the world can be against me. All experiences come to me to promote my reclamation of peace that I may in turn acquire wisdom and power. Um, now, that rephrasing of putting it in the first person um, makes me responsible, okay? So I am the one that has to follow the law. I'm not telling anyone else, um, you know? So I don't disagree with his phrasing. I'm just saying that for me, it makes, it, it makes a, a larger impact when I put it in the first person. Um, now, in terms of peace, I want to go back to that because for me and, and my studies of, of uh, quantum physics in terms of, of what scientists are now talking about, things like string theory, um, and they, they are looking at, you know, thoughts are things, um, photon energy. Uh, electrons how our thoughts influence electrons I don't know if you know what these things are they are extremely abstract but um, let's say um, I, I, I uh, let me see if I can explain to you in terms of what I told some of my um, physical science students you take a chair okay the chair seems solid you can touch it you can feel it um, and you can hit it okay so you know it's tangible but the chair is made of cells it's made of uh, molecules and if you take a microscope and you look at this chair you look one look at one part of a chair and you just keep going to a, a higher magnitude making what you see it's it's uh, if you're looking at a smaller section but it amplifies what you're seeing. So if you can just keep going, uh, increasing your, your magnification of what you're looking at, eventually you will come down to the point where you're looking at cell structure um, in maybe perhaps in a, um, you know, one of your classes you may, may have done some experiments looking at cells. Um, 
when you get to sales, then they go in the book and they start showing you pictures. So sales are made of molecules. And um, so you have many, 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 many molecules in one cell. Uh, molecules are made of atoms. And you have many, 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 many atoms in one molecule. Mo the atoms are made of what we call subatomic particles. Okay, so, and, and they're naming subatomic particles. We know um, a nucleus the, uh, I'm sorry, the neutron, the proton, and the electron. Those are taught in, in physical science classes. But particles get smaller and smaller. In fact, what scientists are discovering is that the smaller you go, the more there is to know. So um, that's, that's life, you know. The more you, the more you learn, the more there is to know. And, and so they're finding that that applies to is far as they can go in terms of studying uh, what is solid, what is real. So what they are finding out is that when you get to that subatomic level, your thoughts begin to influence reality. Um, this is a huge huge um, subject to talk about and I had been very hesitant to discuss it because I'm learning about it myself and um, and the implications of it and it's difficult to talk to to people about it so one of the reasons I wanted to put this in a video format was so that I, <laughs> I could say what I needed to say without being interrupted uh, and I'm, I'm putting it in this format also because being able to talk about it helps me to grow in my understanding to get those words out of, of my mind and just hear them so it helps me to grow in my understanding and my reason for putting this uh, to sh for sharing it is because as I grow maybe I can help someone else to advance their thinking and someone who hears this may be able to add to my thinking and, and that's so that's why I want to discuss it at this point of my new discovery um, now what I am um, what I am coming into consciousness about concerning the ability of thoughts to influence things is the um, the reason that our men is given the level of peace. If you have the power to influence your surroundings, then that means that your surroundings do not control you. Okay. If you have the power to influence your surroundings, then that means that your surroundings do not control you. And they control you when you don't exercise your power. Now, Europeans have taken this understanding and just run rampant with it and destroyed the world. So we don't know if Earth is going to recover uh, human habitation. <laughs> because of the level of destruction that is possible when you use this law without putting it in context with the other laws. Okay, so um, the other laws are designed to help you to use your powers of uh, transforming your environment so that everything stays in alignment, in balance, in harmony. So the laws are given to you in order to provide the structure that you need to make the best decisions. Um, and so that's why the knowledge can be very dangerous. Fortunately, as Ra Unnefra Amin says, 
and uh, uh, what he says is that there is a point where you are locked out of this power if you misuse it uh, because he said it's like giving giving an atomic bomb to a child you know giving them the button and just letting them play with it so the universe has designed um, the means to lock you out of the power so that you cannot use it to to um, cause irreparable damage so th what that means is that if we are indeed to uh, humans are indeed if, if we have destroyed the planet so that uh, we can no longer exist in human form then we have to understand that human form is not our total existence okay so that um, that can be a comfort to you <laughs> uh, we are here to experience um, we're here to grow now one of the things that um, I thought about on, in those terms deals with those are in the cornfield uh, when you plant the seed in your mind in your meditation then the seed goes through a process before it sprouts in that process the seed is in mother earth the waters that you pour on it and I did mention newt the waters of newt those waters are transformative they provide the environment for the energy of the seed to heat up in Mother Earth and to transform. So those waters are, are sort of return the seed to its source. What that means in my mind is that the waters return you to the subatomic level where all possibility, all potentials exist. And when you're at that level, anything is possible. Of course, the seed is metaphorical. So you can um, apply this to your life. Um, one of the things that block our access to the waters of new Newt is um, emotion. When we have negative emotions, those things prevent us from seeing possibilities and potentials. And we're locked into um, believing that the situations that we're in are true, real, and uh, unchangeable. They're, they're, uh, we can't change anything. And that's that's what our eyes and our perception leads us to believe that because a chair is a chair it cannot be changed okay um, that's a that's a difficult concept if you have a chair in your house how did it get there if you have a chair in your house, somebody put it there. Was it you? Someone designed the chair, uh, designed it that the house would, would have that chair. So if you are able to change your perceptions, you may not point a finger and touch the chair and change it into, um, you know, change its shape or turn it into a refrigerator or something like that. But you can choose to take the chair out of the house and replace it. Okay, that's a small level of uh, understanding how you can change your environment. Um, but the, the point is that you can change your environment. You can change your emotions. You can change... Uh, your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, your situations. Those things can be changed. But you have to be able to go through the process. And that process is what is given to us through the tree of life in the, in the Metuneta. 
the metronet is not the only text that um, teaches you these things it is what I have chosen to learn learn uh, about through tra learn transformation to learn about transformation because it made so much sense to me but transformation and peace go together because of the potential that exists on the level of peace that the level of peace is the waters in new where all possibilities exist and it begins with your thought processes your beliefs um, do you believe you can change the situation that you're in do you believe that you are connected to everything on that subatomic level that you are you, your thoughts can influence everything around you everything around you is made up of some type of proton electron neutron everything that is around you is made up of matter that's that's what I'm describing your thoughts have the ability to influence the matter that is around you um, in that sense if you ask for cooperation ask and it shall be given if you ask for cooperation um, and you're willing to honor whatever it is that you're asking you're probably going to get the cooperation you need in order to make the change now that's a big part of you being able to honor whatever or whoever it is that you're asking to make a change if you ask for cooperation in anger in fear in um, jealousy resentment all of those things and it's unlikely that you're going to get the cooperation that you seek um, and that is something that is is we overlook that because you have to be able to pull back your emotions in order to be able to ask for the cooperation in a manner that you are you will be able to receive the cooperation and so that's um, that's where I am with this understanding learning how to ask for cooperation by honoring whoever I am talking to or um, even in a really outrageous sense whatever I am talking to because if you believe you can have something you can have it it all depends on you know how strongly you believe it and we've been trained to think okay if you work hard enough, work hard enough, work hard enough, you'll get what you want. That's not necessarily true. And <laughs> our ancestors are the primary uh, examples of that. They worked hard. They worked hard. We know this. The question is, you know, so hard work is not the only answer. It's necessary in terms of taking your actions, but there's groundwork that needs to be done as well uh, within yourself because you can work hard and, and gain what you ask for, but you want to do it in harmony so that you are not throwing anyone else or anything else out of balance. And that's what the Tree of Life is about. When you... Um, Sometimes when you work, it doesn't look like anything is happening because you don't see anything moving. And the best example of that is when you plant that seed in the, in the Mother Earth and you pour that water, nothing happens immediately. Everything that happens, I'm sorry, it's not that nothing is happening, it's just that it's happening out of your sight. 
The seed is transforming out of your sight. And so all of these things that I'm talking to you, talking about to you on the tree of life, most of the things that happen when you work the system of the tree of life, your family and friends, they cannot see the change because it's not happening where they can see it. But the change is happening as long as you work the system. So the change is hidden and oftentimes it's hidden from you because you don't see the change the way you expect to see it. But it's happening and that is something that you have to trust. And you can trust it simply by understanding, going and studying more about um, the levels, the spheres of the tree of life because everything is explained to you. As you work the steps, these things are taking place. Um, I'm trying to, is there, I think that that's pretty much what I wanted to say about the subject of transformation and the um, Osar's cornfield. Except that when you go through this transformation and the seed is planted in Mother Earth, Everything that you need is there. Everything that you need to nurture yourself is there. Just as a baby in the mother's womb, everything, the placenta, the, it's there for the nourishment, the nurturing, the sustenance, the prosperity that you need. The trick is learning how to see that it's there because when we learn to see, we can actually see the transformation as it progresses. Otherwise, you just have to work on faith. But you don't have to do that if you cultivate learning how to see. And what you're seeing is what mostly is hidden from other people. Okay, so that's pretty much what I have to say about um, that we have the power to transform our lives and knowing that you have that power brings on a level of peace that nothing can disturb thank you for watching good fortune ashe